Good afternoon guys and welcome to the channel. Today's a real shitty day in New Jersey. Really extra shitty with shit on top. It is 19 degrees and I fucking hate this. So the DVD in motion bypass showed up for the radio. I'm gonna put that on, finish with the HIDs. It's going to be awesome. Let's get started. So here's the two intakes, the AEM beside the engine. So the engine is definitely harder to install. As you can see, the AEM intake kind of curves around and meets the throttle body like a normal intake. You just need a regular uh, two to three inch coupler. Whereas with the engine, it stops and they use the coupler as the 90 degree elbow bend for the pipe. And the way it comes down, it gets in the way of the battery tray, so you have to trim the battery tray a little bit. So it's a little bit harder to install. Overall, the finish I like better on the AEM because it's red or you can get blue or silver. Although the engine is kind of like a metallic pearl black paint, it's really nice. As you can see right here, there's a little bit of a wrinkle where they bent it. Not much. It's mandrel bent, but it just looks like it's not quite perfect right here. I don't know if you can see those bumps, but the AEM does not have that. Overall, the quality of each intake is good, in my opinion. So I do think the engine's a little bit lower of a quality due to the wrinkles uh, right where they bent the pipe. The AEM looks like it's a much better quality product. So apparently it outflows the AEM, so I'm definitely gonna install it. However, my heater for the garage stopped working. I gotta go get another one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish installing the stereo, get this boxed up, go for a drive, gotta get a better heater for the garage, and then I'll be able to install the colder intake. I don't I don't know if I'm going to get to it today, but I'm definitely going to be getting it done uh, sometime mid next week. Tomorrow I've got another video coming. Let's go take a look at these wheels that I've got. I'll show you guys what wheels I got, what they look like. There we have it. They look phenomenal. So what do you guys think? Don't you think they look awesome? These are really going to set the Integra Type R off. It's just going to be so badass. I can't wait to get them on. I think the black on white is a good theme. Not as good as the Type R wheels, but I think they look really good. These are Volk TE37 uh, replicas, basically, and, and they look fantastic. Those are my favorite wheels, the Volk TE37s, and these are replicas, and Rota make great wheels, so I just think they look fantastic. So here is the wire bypass for the DVD player, and what this basically does is it allows you to watch DVDs while you're driving. Why would you want to do that? I said that in my other video. It's not really smart. Now it's time to install the DVD bypass, and as you can tell, it's freezing out here and I hate the cold, but I got to get this done. And if you guys have ever thought about doing this yourself, it's really not that hard. There's three wires, a black, a blue, and a green. The black grounds out to the head unit. The blue wire goes directly to the remote wire to the radio, not the battery voltage, but the one that the accessory or ignition uh, signals to the radio to turn on. And then the green finally goes to the wire that tells the head unit you have your emergency brake on, which in most cases is green. So it's only three wires. So this should only take a few minutes and then I'll be able to put the radio back in and everything will be good to go. So there you have it, a nice clean wire harness for the head unit, all tidied up. It does work, I tested it. The DVD now plays even with the emergency breakdown. The bypass completely works, everything is good to go. If you guys are looking to buy one for yourself, I'll put the link down there in the information box below so you guys can get one. They're very affordable, they're like $8. So it was a really easy install. I just connected the blue wire right here to the red accessory wire with a crimp. The green wire went to the green DVD input signal wire, which goes to the e-brake. I crimped that and then I just crimped into the ground and then I tied it off and you can see there it is right there and I've got the harness completely together but I'm gonna go ahead and get the head unit installed and then get the car fired up and it's time to go for a drive My first pick for 
best project or sports car for 10,000 or under will have to be the Mark IV R32. It is a fantastic vehicle with so much potential and they are wicked fast and they can be made even fast. Now, if you don't know a lot about cars, I'm not talking about the GTR R32. I'm talking about the Mark IV Golf R32, which is all wheel drive and a fantastically engineered German machine. It is definitely my first pick for a project sports cars under $10,000. And when I say project, I don't mean beat up. I mean a car that you buy and you can make even faster. Kind of like the Integra Type R that I'm doing right now. My number two for project sports cars under 10,000 is the one that I'm in, the RSX Integra DC5 chassis. You can get a really good condition RSX for about $5,000 to $7,000. And for a few thousand more, you can be running 13s at the track all day and you're still under 10,000. Blow a few grand more and you'll be in the low 12s, high 11s with a supercharger. So my number two pick should definitely make your list as it's a really fantastic vehicle. I'm driving the real Type R right now, which goes above anything in this list. But in America, the RSX is definitely number two. And with the RSX, you don't have to spend a whole buttload of money, just like you won't have to with the R32. Now, number three on my list would be a Honda S2000. You can get those for relatively cheap as well. They're starting to show up in places between 10 and 13,000. You get a high mileage one, AP1, which is before the refresh in 2004. You can definitely get those for right at or around $10,000. There's quite a few I've seen at 9,500 and 10,000 flat. That barely makes the list, but you can find them for 10,000. And if you can, then it's definitely my number three pick. Full bolt-on S2000s are producing pretty much 300 crank horsepower all day, intake, header, exhaust, and a nice tune from Honda. Honda is not the only company that does tunes, but there's so many parts available for an S2000. Now, if you wanna go forced induction with the S2000, that's gonna get you into the 11s all day relatively easily. They make all kinds of power with a turbo, and that F22 engine is no joke. You can do all kinds of stuff to it, and it's loud. The VTEC is insanely loud, and the crossover is very aggressive. The car handles well, it looks good. It's just an all around gem. Now, my next pick for project cars slash sports cars under $10,000 is the Honda EM1 Coupe. If you don't know what that is, it's the 99 to 2000 Civic SI. Those are very expensive, and they were well over $10,000 until a few years ago. Now you can get them between $4,000 and $8,000, depending on where you get them. Some are still ten dollars or $11,000. I recommend getting one in the $4,000 to $7,000 range with a little higher mileage, but those are really tough engines. They're the B16. You can get them for, like I said, between four and seven thousand you can put two three thousand bolt-ons and a VTEC controller and you're looking at a 200 220 horsepower coupe all day long that's capable of running 14s great project car you can sleeve it put rods and pistons in there put a turbo on it maybe looking at a five thousand dollar build and you're looking at four or five hundred horsepower out of that engine and get you some nice DSS axles and you're looking at easy an 11 second Honda maybe a 10 second all day long and with the build and the right price on that car you can build the whole thing for about ten thousand as I found multiple EM ones that are about four or five thousand now you put about five thousand dollars into it maybe a little bit more and you're looking at a 400 plus horsepower monster that will run at least 11 seconds I've seen them run at the track all day long that is definitely an amazing build for ten thousand dollars or less now keep in mind not to get too crazy as you could end up over ten thousand dollars but it's relatively easy to stay at ten thousand or below in the cars that i'm mentioning my next pick besides the em1 is definitely going to be an eg slash ek hatch slash crx any of these three hatches are going to net you insane quarter mile times with just naturally aspirated bolt-on Honda engines because they're so light. Now don't quote me on this, but I think the CRX is around 1,700 pounds, the EG is around 21, and the EK is around 23-ish, but they're all right around 2,000 pounds, the CRX being the lightest, EG next and EK being the heaviest, but they're all at least three to 400 pounds lighter than the RSX slash Integra DC5 chassis. For example, you can get a beat up, junked, crappy looking EG hatch 92 to 95 
for about six, seven hundred dollars. Good solid frame, engine and tranny blown junk it. Get you a K20 swap with transmission, axles, all the wiring harness, and you're only looking at about four thousand dollars for that engine swap. You put it all in, you're looking at around six thousand for the car and the engine and the swap, maybe seven thousand, and just the way it sits, that car is capable of running high 13s. You do an intake, a header exhaust, and a K Pro, and some stronger axles and good tires, you're looking at a low 13, high 12 second hatch with just bolt-ons. Do a supercharger, you're in the tens all day, and even with a supercharger, you're still looking at around 10 or 11,000. That is a nasty build project car right there. Now those numbers are based off the EG or the EK hatch. Now you don't even want me to start talking about the CRX with a supercharged K20, because they're about as fast as a Hellcat. As I've seen a K24, K20 Frank build in a CRX, it was only putting out about 300 crank horsepower, and it was running low 12s, high 11s all day. You can only imagine if you put another 100 horsepower on it, you're gonna be into the tens with no problem. Now my next pick is an E46. That's one of BMW's best and most hottest cars they've ever designed. The E46 M3, you can find 0203 models for right around nine or $10,000. They're starting to drop in price, and that is an excellent project car. I just recommend fortifying the rear subframe with weld-on brackets. But other than welding in subframe brackets or braces, in the back, you're looking at a $10,000 car that has 333 horsepower bone stock. Full bolt-ons, you're getting real close to 400 horsepower. It's one of my favorite cars ever made. It's a fantastically engineered machine, and I absolutely love it. The next choice for a project car under $10,000 is a Fox Body Mustang. You can get an LX Fox Body 5.0 bone stock in perfect good condition, good body, good frame, good paint for around five dollars to $8,000. Sometimes they're a little less. Those are insane with bolt-ons. You could spend about three or four thousand dollars in those cars and be in the elevens all day long and be street legal. It's just insane what you can do to those cars, or you can engine swap them. Now, staying at ten thousand or below for the car and some mods is very easy. Like I said, you can get a five O LX for around five six thousand dollars. Put five thousand in it. You're at ten or eleven and you're gonna be making about 400 to 450 all day. That was one of my favorite muscle cars ever built was the Fox Body Mustang. I absolutely loved it as a kid and you can build them so affordably now, they are one of my favorite vehicles and my top pick on this list. Now my next pick is another Mustang S197 chassis 05 to 11, which is an amazing Mustang and they handle great and you can get an 05 or an 06 GT, relatively low mileage and good condition for about seven or $8,000 depending on the person you're buying it from. You can make them wicked fast, so affordably. Long tube headers and intake and a tune is gonna run you about $2,000 and that right there will get you about three 325 to the wheels, which on those cars is good for low 13s, high 12s. If you think about that, you're gonna be able to do it for around $10,000, which is insane. Until the S550 came out with the new Mustangs, 2015 plus, the S197 was the best Mustang chassis ever built, and it got better with every single year. They are a damn good car. Like I said, you can get about 325 wheel horsepower out of an S197 for about 10,000 or less for the car and the mods, the bolt-ons, the tune. Just an awesome vehicle. Now my next pick for a project car is going to be the Dodge Neon SRT4. I think it is a phenomenal vehicle, as was the Caliber, but the Neon was lighter and faster, so I definitely recommend the Neon. Now you can get an SRT4 with relatively low miles and in good condition for between $4,000 and $8,000. And when I say they are insane, they are absolutely filthy nasty insane. They are so fast for the money. You can put about $2,000 in mods, bolt-ons, and a tune on an SRT4 Neon, and they got an iron block, so you don't gotta worry about blowing the bottom end. You can have a Neon SRT4 with the mods and be under 10,000 and be in the 11s all day. The SRT4 Neon was just a beast. So those are my picks for cars, 10,000 or under for project cars. Sorry if I missed a car that you guys liked. Uh, those are just the picks that I would mention. I'm gonna have another video coming out talking about project cars that are affordable for a certain amount or less. This is not the only one, but sorry if I missed a car that you liked. For this video, that's the list of cars that I wanted to talk about. And with the first car that I picked with the Mark IV Golf R32, you can make them wicked fast as well as the RSX. R32 Mark IVs and RSXs are in the 12s and the 11s all day with boost. They're amazing vehicles as well. All the cars I mentioned are going to get you good times at the track, good times on the street, fast, fun, and they're just a joy to drive.
that's gonna do it for today's video, guys, on the best sports slash project cars for 10,000 or less. And of course, getting the radio installed on the Integra Type R and getting the DVD in motion bypassed, going for a drive, showing you guys the wheels. Hopefully you had fun with this video. Got lots of stuff coming tomorrow. I got new things going in the Integra Type R. Again, lots of stuff coming for the Integra Type R. I didn't forget about the Durango SRT. I've got lots of stuff coming. And the Hellcat is gonna be in tomorrow's video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and comment below. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching all my videos and thank you for helping me get to 7,000 subscribers. Go ahead and support the channel at drivewaydemons.com. Get your hoodie there. Support the channel there as well, drivewaydemons.com. But I'm Corey with Driveway Demons. Until the next video, remember, have fun and be safe.